Okay, let's see if I can do this this time. Where I left off, as I was saying, the only thing that we replace of Israel's is because of the cross. Everything got resolved at the cross except for one thing. The kingdoms. He wins at the cross over Satan, Psalm 110. 1 Hebrews 1, 2. Israel had rejected him, so he cannot be immediately king of the Jews at that time. That was already forecast to the Jews long ago in Isaiah 53. That's why there are two advents. He comes the first time, he pays for sins, he's rejected by the people. He comes back the second time to take over rulership. That's with respect to the Jews. But there was another issue, another kingdom. There was another group that rejected him, the angels. Okay. The angels had rejected him. Satan and one third of the angels, prehistoric, pre man. Christ is resolving that too. We replace the demons as Paul is going to explain or had already explained by this point I'm not sure if Colossians came before or after Ephesians in Colossians 2.15 one-on-one -on -one, triumphal procession church replacing the demons that's what that verse says my pastor spent a lot of time on that you can you know go to the church and ask them for you know what he said about it but you can see it in the verse you don't necessarily even need to go to him not too many pastors know about that because they're all busy looking at the left hand side of the screen saying we replace Israel no you don't they had their own deal they had their own covenant Christ fulfilled the law Romans 10 4 which Paul's gonna end up saying on the left hand side if you read the rest of the book but see if you're anti-semitic you cherry pick your verses you don't reconcile the whole Bible within itself like you're supposed to do you cherry pick verses that suit the positions you want to support. So then even a brain out can tell how wrong you are and make a video like this. Look at the left hand side of the screen and now look at the right hand side of the screen. The left hand side is all about well what about the Jews? Paul's writing to the anti-Semitic Romans and in Romans 10.4 I guess I should go there and show you Romans 10 4 he says Christ fulfilled the law see right here it says and but it's telos let me show you the Greek I know you don't necessarily like the Greek but okay telos it's translated here and it means fulfillment it, it, it's specifically teleo is the verb let me show you the Greek sorry See, it comes from teleo. Teleo means to complete something. Okay, you got two basic verbs that the writer of Hebrews uses and Paul uses also. You got pleiro, which means to fill up something. That's used for the filling of the Spirit in the New Testament. It's a different word from the filling of the Spirit in the Old Testament. So it's because it's a different covenant. Hello. Then your other fulfillment word is talaio, which means to complete. It's got a legal connotation of completing a contract. Unfortunately, the King James and everybody else, especially in the book of Hebrews, mistranslates talaio as perfect. That's not, that's not really a mistranslation. It means to perfect as in to perfect a contract. To complete a contract. You got these terms, you do this, I do this, that's our contract. You know, specifically Isaiah 53 10 contract Christ completed the contract on the cross right hand side of the screen with God Father Isaiah 53 10 that has other ramifications with relationship to other groups and each group has its own award to Christ one of the other groups is the Jews one of the other groups is the rest of the humanity paid for all sin not just some God is holy he deserves to be paid for all sin and I maintain that that same Hebrews 1 and 2 which is basically telling you what I just said 
The contract is to pay for all sin. He won. He beat Satan. Okay, well then, he paid for all the angel, angel sins too. Because an angel's sin is an offense to God just as much as a human sin is. So he had to pay for the whole thing. And by being lower than the angels, he was able to pay for the whole thing. It was a harder thing to do. But he's God-man, so he's got all the top and all the bottom in his own nature. So the quality of his thinking, enabled by the Holy Spirit, not by his own power, the quality of his thinking is high enough to be God-level, no matter whose sins they are. So he beats different groups, and he gets different kingdoms because he beats different groups. So they each have their own covenant. That's the thing that's being said here. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. In other words, he fulfilled the law. The Mosaic law is obsolete. That's the theme of Hebrews 7. All right? So the last thing a, a, a Christian should try to say, or would even want to say, is we replace the Jews. See, look at this here. Well, not all Israel is descended from Israel. You know, this is a flagship verse of the Christian identity people. And it's what the Calvinists and Catholics also use. The church began in Abraham's tent. We replace Israel. No, the only thing we replace is her promise of brideship. That's Matthew 22. Vashti refused to come. When Christ the groom arrived, Vashti refused to come. So now the king, father, is going out to the highways and byways to find an Esther church which might be Jews and might be Gentiles that's Galatians 3 I mean you know these books all tie together you don't read one out of context of all the rest of them they're not all written at the same time but it's like a serial novel didn't we all enjoy Stephen King's The Green Mile okay you didn't just look at chapter 1 and not look at chapter 10 that was a serial novel of his. It was one of his few serial novels. I'm not even sure if he ever wrote another serial novel. You know, that was the one that they made a movie of. It starred Tom Hanks and that big black guy that everybody loves. You know, coffee. It was a serial novel. You don't, you, you got, you got a, an ongoing story being told. You don't just read part of the story and forget the rest of the story. But this is what the Catholics and the Calvinists and any anti-Semite wants to do. Is they look at the left-hand side of the screen and say, Whoops! There we go. We did what Abraham did. And Israel is out. And we replaced them. Yeah. And see, they're just looking at that. They're not looking at number 10. Okay, you say you replace Israel? Dummies? This is how retarded replacement theology is. You want to say you replace Israel? Okay, well, Christ is the end of that law. So, now what? You replaced Israel, but their law is no more. So, why why are you replacing what is no more? You see how dumb they are? Look at the left-hand side of the screen now. Now, compare it to the right-hand side of the screen. What is really going on? We are His workmanship, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Epi ergois agatois. My American accent in Greek. Huh? There's no definite article here. That's not human works. That's God's works. This is where my God deeds videos come from. When my pastor exegeted this verse, I went ballistic. Because he, he went to a lot of explanation about the Ionic dative. It's a founding. It's the founding purpose. And you can see it. Go look it up in Thayer's uh, lexicon. Let's see if I got Thayer's here. My version of Thayer's is not going to necessarily... It, it's going to probably bore you. Okay. Epi here. Okay. That's Freiburg, B. Dag. Where's there? There should have been first. How come I'm not getting Fry there first? There's at the bottom. Okay, well, I'm, the video is now going to get off topic. That's B. Dag. Where's there? Golly. 
Well, I'm going to end up getting into too, too much of a thing, but if you look in Thayer's lexicon, which you can get with the Word software for free, or you pay for it, or you can get it in BibleWorks, go look up the Thayer entry for this. This is, my, my pastor already taught it, but, you know, it's confirmed in Thayer. This is an Ionic dative. Ion was a guy who founded the Greek Sea Peoples. Ion is the name of the play that Paul is patterning Ephesians after. Okay, Ionic dative therefore comes to mean a founding purpose, and it, it, it you know it says upon, but it has a concept of purpose, a founding purpose. We are founded, founded in Christ, not in Israel. In other words. The Catholics make the mistake of saying, well, Peter's the head of the church, Matthew 16, 18. Christ is very clearly saying he's the foundation of the church in that verse. Not Peter, not anybody else. There's no other head but him. There's no head on earth. There's no vicar of Christ on earth. There are 104 uses of Petra in the Old Testament. That's Christ's name there. Petros means a little chip. It's a diminutive form. It means a chip off the bedrock. That's Peter's name. They're not the same thing. A chip is not the same as a bedrock. Duh. Okay. So, if you want to claim that, oh, well, you know, we're a part of, we replace Israel, then you're not part of the bedrock. You're claiming a foundation on the Mosaic Law rather than the right-hand side of the screen on Christ. That's how retarded replacement theology is. It's kind of the ultimate statement of it. Right there, the founding purpose, Ionic dative, right here. We're translated for right here. Okay, it usually means upon, but when it's in the Ionic, it's talking about purpose. The founding purpose. We are God's workmanship created in who? Christ Jesus, not the Jews. For God's works. See? The good there has no article. There's no fronting article which would make it human. Let me get rid of that. Okay? This is our foundation, Christ, not the Mosaic Law. On the left hand side, Mosaic Law is ended because Christ completed it. And telos from teleo means to complete. He completed the law, He fulfilled it. He completed all of its terms. So he's the end of the law. Paul's making wordplay. The completion of the law, law is complete already. So now instead of the left-hand side of the screen, it's in blue. you got the right-hand side of the screen, and it's open to every Jew also. Because it's a new covenant, not replacement theology. So Romans 9, which talks about the Jews here, not all who believe, see, you know, not all Israel's is Israel. <laughs> okay? This is what they hang their hand on. Okay, well, did you bother to read like the rest of the book? See, Romans 10. Romans 10 forces the law is over. Why do you want to base yourself on the Jews? Why do the Jews want to still say that the Old Testament applies? Well, that's their problem, but don't you, you don't have to have a brain fart like they're having. See, Christ is the end of the law. Law, Romans 10, 4 comes after Romans 9. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you got the reason why. Christ created a new deal here based on a different kingdom, replacing the kingdom of the demons, not the kingdom of the Jews. We're replacing, all right. We replace two things. Okay? We replace the bride ship. That's Romans 11. Up here. We're grafted in. We're the grafted in bride. See? Let me pull it up here. See, a remnant of Jews are still around. But, you see, because Paul's relying on them having heard Galatians already. We're grafted in. Okay? The Jews who are d alive during this time and the Gentiles who are alive during this time are one group. We saw that earlier in Ephesians. 
and on the left hand side of the screen were grafted in. See? And the grafting in is to make them jealous, all right? So that they, why would, why would God want to make them jealous? So that they can have it too. See, we're not replacing them. It's, an, it's, it's a display to them so they can have what we got because the covenant changed, because it's a different group now. It's Kaida Melchizedek, which is Hebrews 5 through 10. Based on Psalm 110, which is defeating of Satan, we replace Satan's group, not Israel. But Israel was offered brideship which is what Ephesians 2.10 on the right hand side of the screen is talking about. The mystery, hidden, it's always a term used for pregnancy, Paul's big deal. Brideship is a different covenant from what was true before. The brideship covenant was eschatological. But Israel said, no, she didn't want to be bride, but Vashti refused to come, Matthew 22. All right, but Jews are wandering around on the highways and byways still. So are Gentiles. Hi, you believe in Christ? You're part of church, you're part of, you're bride of Christ. Because we're not founded on the Mosaic Law. We're created in Christ Jesus for divine good. God deeds. Which God prepared in advance. And then he's using the classic Jewish term, peripatomen. Peripatesumen. Walk. See, 